Please be advised, all music tracks used in this production are original compositions. Thank you. Hello and welcome to all our listeners and viewers. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate, producer and host of the award-winning Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast, available wherever you get your podcast. Our podcast is rated internationally as one of the best social work podcasts you must follow in 2023. This podcast promotes, celebrates, uplifts, and highlights the social work profession. Our aim is to educate the general public about the powerful impact social workers have on the lives of those they serve. The podcast will also amplify the vital contributions professional social workers make in every aspect of our society every day. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Silas. Most of you that are viewing this now know me as Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate. And I just wanted to just give some parting thoughts as 2023 gets ready to come to an end. Uh, you know, I'm in the process of moving. And uh, during that time, I was able to start going through a lot of the things that I had stored, things that I hadn't seen in a while. And and I started realizing that as individuals and, and as human beings, especially in my case, um, sometimes we, we lose sight of a lot of the things that we've done and we've accomplished. And so I just wanted to say that as I was going through my things, I started realizing all the times that you know, I had had significant accomplishments and achievements, and also the times that I've had failures, setbacks, disappointments. Uh, and, and so I, I, I became more appreciative of the fact that life is cyclical. Sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. But if you're here and you're viewing this right now, as we get ready to go into 2024, think back of how you got here. Think back to all the times you've been on top. Think back to how you got there. And think back to the times when you were actually on the bottom and rose to the top. And that points to your tenacity, your, as my late foster mother, Mrs. Ruth Alexandra Cox used to say, your stick to itiveness. And it points to your inner fortitude, your strength and your resilience and your determination to never give up and to never quit. So as we go forward into 2024, take stock of things that have happened in your life. Look back, look at all your achievements, look at all your successes, look at all your failures, look at what happened right after you had a significant failure or a defeat in your life. Look at how you rose to the challenge and rose to the occasion after that defeat. Look at how many times you've been on top and then the next minute you are at the very bottom. And let that be encouragement and inspiration to all of you going into 2024 to know that you have what it takes to be successful against insurmountable odds. You have what it takes to overcome any challenge, any setback, any difficulty. It's in you already. And the proof of that is that you're here today watching this video and now hopefully you're thinking back to all the accomplishments that you've had, to all the setbacks and failures and disappointments that you've overcome. Let that tell you something about yourself. And as we go into 2024, we have so much to be grateful for and so much to be thankful for. I look back at the beginning of this year and in February, my story was featured in Faces of Long Island, the Newsday special feature. I am the youngest of eight children. My late mother and my late father, they were unfortunately unable to care for us properly. That's not a condemnation, that's just a reality of the facts. Due to that, we were removed from the home by the New York City authorities. My name is Silas W. Kelly, and I grew up in Amityville, New York. At the time the authorities came and removed us all, I was the youngest and my next oldest brother, we got put into two separate foster homes. The other six siblings 
all got put into an orphanage called Hillcrest Home for Boys and Girls. I was placed in Brooklyn. It was a very cruel, abusive, and traumatic experience. Thank goodness the profession of social work picked up on something because eventually they removed me from that home. The woman that I was staying with, she forcefully sat me on the stoop, she spun on her heels, and she slammed the door. I was three years old, and the first thing that ran through my head was, wow, I must not be worth anything because she sat me out here like somebody sits out the trash. My self-esteem was destroyed. Next thought that came to my head was that this is a cruel, cold, heartless, and inhumane world. Eventually, a cab pulled up. A social worker got out, opened up the back door of the cab, and there was this beautiful, beautiful woman sitting there, and she was my saving grace. She was my new foster mother. On the other side of her, there was another little boy, and he leaned forward. He said to me, you're my little brother, and I'm going to take care of you. And I got reunited at that moment with the youngest of my older eight siblings. And he and I grew up together in that loving home right here in Amityville. She went out of her way as our foster mother to make sure that my brother Paul and I never ever harbored any ill will towards our biological parents, especially our mother. When I was 16, I got caught riding in a stolen car. I had to go to court. My foster father and my foster mother were there, and my social worker was there. The judge said, because you have such a strong support system, rather than send you to reform school, I'm going to sentence you to probation. And that meant a lot to me because maybe I did need a second chance, and I got that. I pay homage to my biological parents because they gave me life, and I pay homage to my foster parents because they made my life. Years later, by this time I'm married, and I'm sitting down talking to my wife, I, I want to get my master's. Where should I get my master's in? And she said, social work. You're a product of the system. You do a lot of volunteer work. And you've worked in the mental health and, and, and counseling field. I thought about it. I said, that makes perfect sense. So I enrolled at Adelphi University. And in 2014, um, I graduated with my master's in social work. My father-in-law and my mother-in-law are both the co-pastors of the church that I belong to. I've been volunteering for 21 years. I've been married to their daughter for 20 years. So, so I started volunteering at the food pantry. They offered me the opportunity to be able to provide um, food to any individuals that I knew that I could identify that were suffering from food insecurity. And I get food from that food pantry and I deliver it to my veterans. I learned in May of last year that I was selected as the 2022 International Rhoda G. Sarnet Award winner for positively uplifting the image of social work in the social work profession. I would have never thought from that little boy sitting on a stoop in Brooklyn that I would be down in Washington, D.C. accepting an award for positively uplifting the profession of social work. The advice I would give to children in foster care today, no matter what happens, Believe in yourself. No matter what happens, know that you have value. Know that you have worth. But never stop believing in yourself. Because at the end of the day, that's all you got. At the end of this year, my story was told on SoCal Shout Out. So, and in between that, it was a lot of stressful times, a lot of challenging times, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so, as I look back and I've taken stock of how I got here, I'm very proud. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to look back. I want you to take stock of how you got here, the things that you've done, all the things that you've accomplished this year. And let that be a sneak preview of what's coming in 2024. Because mark my words, as I sit here and speak to you, 2024 is going to be a great and banner year. So, Happy New Year to all of you. Take stock. Continue believing in yourself. Show love. Show kindness. Peace and blessings. Love and light. And to you all, I say namaste. Thank you.
Once again, this is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate, producer, and host of the show. You've been listening to the award-winning Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast. This and all other episodes are available on our Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon Music, Audible, and iHeart Audio Podcast platforms, among others. The podcast is also available on our Spotify and YouTube video podcast platforms. Go to any search engine and type in Kelson on the Air in the search window to hear this show in its entirety. Please make sure to click subscribe to support our podcast. And don't forget to like, comment, download, and share. To reach us for more information, email us at info at kelson.org. That's info at kelson.org. Or to suggest future topics, log into www.kelson.org. That's www.kelson.org and fill out the share a topic form on our homepage. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a Kelson Communications production.